first of all, want to give glory to God, amen, for he has yet again brought us through another week. I want to give honor to our pastor and his wife, Minister Clove, in the wonderful name of Jesus, and to all you lovely saints who are watching at this time. God is good, amen? amen. God is good? Amen. Come on, we are still here. Say to someone, I am still here. It's something to get excited about because there are many that are not here, sadly, but we are still here another Sunday to give God thanks. You know what? We need to treat this almost like a, a Amazon Prime click, buy, collect, wherever we have one click, buy. Is that what it is? Where we seek what we want, yes. we know what we want, we click on what we want, and we know it's coming. So just because your blessing isn't here yet, it doesn't mean it hasn't been posted, amen? You know it's coming. So I want to say to many of us, just remember to trust the process. Okay, for those of you who have Amazon Prime, you know what I'm talking about. Let's take the difference. Me included, amen. <laughs> but the same works of God, amen. The Bible says if you seek, you shall find. And we do enough of that on Amazon, I'm sure. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I've used Amazon Pasta. <laughs> this lockdown's got me spending some money, so please pray for me on that side. <laughs> but God is still good, amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to open us up in prayer as we proceed into our service. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. There is no one like you. You are our strong tower. You are always there in our hour of need. I pray as we go through this service, Lord, bless everything that is said and done. Bless the speaker, Lord. Bless, bless the praise team, Lord, as we come and worship and adore you and lift your name higher and higher, Lord, for you are the King. You are the Lord of Lords. Have your way this morning in your wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, let the
God we are in. He's the Lord of all. We give you thanks and we give you praise to Him. He is greater than all that we have gone through.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes. Praise the Lord. So good to be back here with you. I'm back. <laughs> Hold on. I'll call me back. And um, I just want to give God all the glory and I give honor to the Spirit of God. And I give honor to my Pastor Mason, his sister pastors, Sister Chloe, and Sister Christine in the mighty one for the name of Jesus. And all of you who are here and watching at home. Now, before I begin, would you be okay with me just singing a song? Because, you know, sometimes there's not enough words to say. Sometimes you can only just sing and give God your heart and give him your very best. So there's this song that was on my heart. I go like this. I'm coming back to the heart of the world. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I This is where I'm meant to be. I've always said that, you know, drumming is one thing, but giving the word of God and giving the message is also something that I'm called to do. We all have a purpose, and I know this is where I'm meant to be standing. And what's so funny about this message today is that pastor was supposed to be preaching this message, but then pastor, well, pastor ended up preaching a different one. Because I, I took it first. <laughs> so, Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Now, when I've chose this message in this scripture, all I can think about is the times that we're in. All I can think about is how this time we're in right now is so dark, and it's only going to get darker. But the Lord is the light. Amen. Jesus is the light. And when we look at the, even just the first line of the scripture, the Lord is my light and my salvation, the very open of the scripture, God already declares who he is in this life, who he is in our lives, and who he should be continuously in our lives. When David the psalmist says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, there are two key words. In fact, three, Lord, light, and salvation. I just want to turn you to another scripture that is also linked with my word today. And when we speak about the light, God from the very beginning of creation says this. In the beginning, this is Genesis 1 by the way, Genesis 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. 
Verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. God saw the light. And it was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. Amen. Amen. What does it mean for God, first of all, to be Lord? Well, it means that he's superior. It means that he's incomparable. It means that he's matchless. It means that he is almighty, head and shoulders above the rest. And there's so much more. Nobody, nothing can compare to him. Hallelujah. He can do what nobody else can. Hallelujah. So right now, we need to be making sure that when we say Lord, we mean it. Don't just give God lip service. Mean it with your heart. Mean it with all your mind. Say, Lord, I want you to be Lord in my life today. I want you to be Lord every second, every minute, every hour. And I don't want to skip out on anything you have for me. You know, I like to eat a lot. And I don't want to skip out on any of my meals. <laughs> and even more so, I don't want to skip out on my spiritual food. I don't want to skip out on everything God has for me. I want him in the morning. I want him in the afternoon. I want him in the evening. I want him even in between that. When I'm occupied, I want him. I need him. I need him to be Lord. We need him to be Lord. You at home need him to be Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So what is the light? What is light? The Oxford Dictionary defines light as the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. Another way we can refer to light is this. It's the word illuminate or illumination, which is, which is to shed light or to bring brightness. What does this mean about God? He is the light in the midst of the darkness. Hallelujah. Darkness flees when God comes about. Yes. Hallelujah. God is everywhere. The darkness cannot right. escape him. Yes. At the name of Jesus, demons flee. Yes. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Wherever there is darkness, light, <laughs> light reveals those hidden things. It will reveal those hidden things in our lives. The things we got that go on behind closed doors, God knows, God sees. It may not be out there for the people to see, but God sees. And that's the most important thing. And because God sees, God has the final say on our lives. It reveals the hidden things and nothing can escape it. Illumination. Turn to the person next to you and say, God, I want you to illuminate in my life. Turn to the person next to you and say that. Hallelujah. Even at home, say to the person next to you, whoever you're sitting with, say, God, I need you to illuminate in my life. Hallelujah. And when God does illuminate in our lives, we can see the truth. We can see the real things that we could not see or that we still can't see. Yeah. But once we do see it, we know our salvation has come. We know our Savior has come. Yes. And he will not only just bring you out, he will take you through. Yes. Yes, he will. You know, this life as Christian ain't meant to be easy. It was never meant to be easy. Once we committed ourselves over to God, we said, Lord, I'm ready to die with you. I'm ready to give myself up. I'm ready, I'm ready to bear my cross. I'm ready to go the distance with you. Because salvation is necessary. Hallelujah. The saving of our souls is necessary. Yeah. And we cannot do this by ourselves. We need God. We need Jesus. You know, it's so funny. Whenever you're going through a dark place, just call on the name of Jesus and everything changes. Hallelujah. Just like that. Everything changes. There's no problem that he cannot solve. There's no problem that he cannot fix. God turns our mess-ups into messages. If God is for you, nothing can be against you. As he lives in us, we are also the light of the world. 
A city, I've heard this before, <laughs> a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Even the smallest match in a dark room or the smallest light in a dark room illuminates that whole room. How much power does light have? Then how much does that say that God is all powerful? How much does that say that we have the power because of God who lives in us? Because of Jesus who died for us? Hallelujah. When we are in Christ, we have no reason to fear. We are the righteousness of God. We are heirs of Jesus. And we can rejoice, as it says in Proverbs 13, verses 9. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked we put out. Yes, yes. Remember, our light that we have is stronger than any darkness. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that. We can rejoice because we are the light of the world. We can rejoice because he is the light of the world. Yeah. John 12 verses 46 says, I am come light into the world, that whosoever believeth from me should not abide in darkness. Once you have tasted the goodness of the light of God, why would you want to go back into darkness? Why would you want to be like someone who's sleepwalking? Open up your eyes and see. See the light that is there. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. And that light shines brighter than anything. Hallelujah. And that light's name is Jesus. Light and salvation. Psalms 19 verses 105 says this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light onto my path. The very essence of who God is, is light. His word, his ways, everything about God is light. There is no fault in God. Amen. There is no fault with God. Psalms 27 verses 2 says this, When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Can I also say this? Whoever is in your life right now, that's trying to get at you, that's trying to keep you down, they're going to stumble and fall. Why? Because God is with you. The light of God is with you. And I'll tell you what else. The reason why they're going to stumble and fall, why they are stumbling and falling all the time, is because they're in darkness. They're blinded by darkness. But it's our responsibility as the people of God to shed light in the darkness. I will say this, that these past couple of months and weeks have been very challenging for me. Sometimes I've even been in darkness and I have to be transparent with you. At home I have to be transparent. If I stand up here and, and be false, that wouldn't be truth. But I stand here in the truth of God. Being transparent with you that sometimes we can all get into go those dark places. I've been in my dark places even this week. But you know what? I wasn't going to let anything stop me from preaching this word. Because this is the same word that's going to break me out of where I am right now. And it's going to break you out of where you are right now. Hold on. Keep the faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't store your treasures here on earth where they will rust and where moss will get at it. Store your treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Darkness cannot overcome the light. Amen. So darkness will not overcome you. When God is your light and salvation, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you right now shall be condemned in Jesus' name. Though life seems dark right now, remember that the goodness of the Lord is upon us it's around us and it's in the land of the living. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, are you living? Are you breathing? <laughs> then that means God's all good. <laughs> Amen. God's all good. You're all good. I'm all good. It just means 
God wants to use you. God wants to take you on a journey like you've never been before. His word will be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He will lead you down a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last verse says this. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen thine heart. Doesn't matter how weak you are feeling right now. Wait on him. He will strengthen that heart. Can I also speak to the person who's even having heart problems right now? And you're needing that healing in your heart as well. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen that heart. Which means he's going to give you your healing yes. right now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what kind of healing it is in your heart. It could be physical, it could be spiritual. But he's going to strengthen your heart right now. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says this. They that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. They shall rise upon wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's nothing wrong with waiting. There is nothing wrong with waiting. I said it before and I'll say it again. God's timing is best. God's ways are best. He works in mysterious ways. You may not even understand his ways. Sometimes I've even found myself questioning God. God, why? Why not now? I, I, I want something, and yet I'm too impatient. Yet, that impatience is that same thing that's holding me back. I'm asking you right now, if there's something you are seeking, seek his face first, yes. and then wait. There's nothing wrong with waiting. The more you wait shows the more that you are willing to commit, to be faithful. God is not looking for those who speak eloquently. God is not looking for your degree. He's not looking for your A-levels, your GCSEs. He's not looking for anything. He is looking for your obedience, though. He's looking for your obedience, though. And part of obedience is waiting. Hallelujah. Lastly, God's light and salvation is the very, very best place to be. To live in his light and salvation. To go by his light and salvation. It's like a traffic light. When you're in God's will, when you are following God, you're about to go into a situation that you're not sure about. God is like a traffic light. He'll tell you when to stop because it's not time yet. He'll tell you when to get ready, and then he'll tell you when to go. Hallelujah. 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 That's God's light in our lives. And if God is the light, and we are his children, we should be just like him. Just like him. We should be an influence in this world that is unseen of and unheard of. You know, people have heard the name Jesus. I, I hear it all the time. I hear a lot of my colleagues at work say, Jesus, and blaspheming. You know, sometimes I'm like, I, I, I finally say to them, when, when, when they blaspheme, they say it's a lot. I'm saying, I, I usually say to them, he's great, isn't he? And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, Jesus, he's great, isn't he? You just said his name. He's great. And you know what? That is, as funny as that is, that's just part of why they know I'm different. Yes. Why they know I'm set apart. Because they know who I serve. They know who I live for. They know who I stand for. I'm not ashamed. And you shouldn't be either. God will never lead us astray. He is our light and our salvation. He is our light and our salvation. Hallelujah. You know... I've been in so many situations that if only I had trusted God enough, I'd be in such a better place. I have to be honest. I have to be honest. 
I'm glad I'm still moving. I'm glad I'm still standing. But I've got to be where God needs me to be. I need to be where God needs me to be. And if I'm not, then I've got to keep striving. I've got to keep chasing after him. I've got to keep dwelling on his word day and night. I've got to meditate on his word day and night. I've got to pattern my life after him. For those of you at home, don't stay in the darkness. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. That light is reaching his hand out to you and he's calling your name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything you've been through. He knows everything you're going through right now. He knows everything you've done. But he says he loves you. And he wants you to come home. And he wants to wrap his arms around you. He says, hey, come into the light. Come here. I can't see you. Why are you hiding from me? I created you. You're my child. Come into the light. Let me see your beautiful face. Let me hear your sweet voice. I'll take care of you. The finances, I'll take care of that. Your home, I'll take care of that. Whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. He'll take care of that. Because he is our light and our salvation. Come. Come to him now. He wants you. Don't leave it too late. Don't leave it too late. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this message, Let the Lord be Lord in your life. Let Jesus be Lord in your life. And then he will illuminate everything in your life. And he will begin to fix everything that's wrong. And he will make it right. And he will save you. And he will hold you and he will keep you. And no matter how many times you fall, he will get you back up again. Because God isn't in the failure business. God is in the winning business. He wins. So I ask you, don't stay there. Don't stay over there in the darkness. Come into the light. In Jesus' name, amen.
show in faith. As we leave at this time, we will walk from there to pray. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all for watching and tuning in to Bethel. Amen. God is good.